If your church does this, run. John 3, verses 5 through 8. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I, Jesus, say to you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, unless one is born of water, the natural body, and is born of the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, God Almighty. That which is born in the flesh, the natural body, is flesh, the natural body. And that which is born in the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, is spirit, the spiritual body. Do not marvel that I, Jesus, said to you, you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, must be born again to the Holy Spirit. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from where it goes. So is everyone, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, who is born in the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. There is one body, the body of Christ, and one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, just as you, fellow believers, were called to be children of God Almighty, in one hope of everlasting life of your calling, one Lord Jesus Christ, one faith, faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, one baptism with the Holy Spirit, one God and Father of all, God Almighty, who is above all, and through all, and in you all, fellow believers. If your church tells you that believer's baptism is a requirement for salvation, i.e. everlasting life, run. Romans 10, verses 8 through 10. But what does it say, the Holy Bible, and specifically the gospel of Jesus Christ? The word is near you, yet to be believers, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith, faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which we, fellow believers, preach, that if you, yet to be believers, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God, God Almighty, has raised him, Jesus Christ, alive from the dead, i.e. Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and subsequent ascension, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, will be saved from the lake of fire, the second death, everlasting condemnation. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession of this faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ is made unto salvation, everlasting life, and God Almighty's immediate presence, with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God Almighty's holy angels, and all the rest of the children of God Almighty, for eternity, forever. Believers' baptism by full immersion in water, following Jesus Christ's example and obedience, is our outward expression of our inward decision, proclaiming to the world our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, as a true follower of Jesus Christ, and as Jesus Christ's light. If your church believes God Almighty is also the God of Islam, or Judaism, or Catholicism, or Mormonism, or Jehovah Witnesses, or any other false religion, run. Exodus 20, verses 1 through 3. And God, God Almighty, spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, God Almighty, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, shall have no other false gods before me, God Almighty. Isaiah 46, verses 9 to 10a. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, God Almighty, and there is no other God. I am God, God Almighty, and there is none like me, God Almighty. Declaring the end of mankind's history, from the beginning of mankind's history. Mark 12, verses 29 and 30. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, God Almighty, the Lord is one, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, shall love the Lord your God, God Almighty, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Galatians 1, verse 8. But even if we, actually false teachers, false believers, and unbelievers, or a false angel from heaven, i.e. Satan, the fallen angels, and demons, preach any other gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ to you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, then what we, fellow believers, have preached to you, the Holy Bible, and specifically the gospel of Jesus Christ, let him, false teachers, false believers, and unbelievers, be accursed in the lake of fire, the second death, everlasting condemnation. If your church tells you or requires you to call any church leader, Father, run. Matthew 23, verse 9. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, Fellow believers, children of God Almighty, do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he, God Almighty, who is in heaven. If your church tells you or requires you to confess your sin to a human being, and that human being can give you forgiveness and absolution personally, run. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God, God Almighty, and one mediator between God and men, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, the man, Christ Jesus. Hebrews 10, verses 17 and 18. Then he, the Holy Spirit, adds, Their sins and their lawless deeds, I, God Almighty, will remember no more. Now where there is remission, i.e. cleansing of these fellow believers, children of God Almighty, there is no longer an offering for sin. Period. If your church worships, or serves, or prays to the Virgin Mary, or to so-called saints, etc., or to statues, or medals, or such, or any other false gods for that matter, run. Remember, who are the saints? We, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, are the saints. Deuteronomy 4, verses 15 and 16. Take careful heed, pay close attention to yourselves, fellow believers, children of God Almighty. For you saw no form when the Lord God Almighty spoke to you at Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves the carved image. 
i.e. statues, medals, etc., in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, i.e. mankind. If your church does not believe the Godhead, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit exists individually and collectively, run. 1 John 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, God Almighty, the Word, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one, the Godhead. If your church does not believe these facts about Jesus Christ, run. Jesus Christ is the one and only Son of God Almighty. Jesus Christ is God Almighty in human form. Jesus Christ lived a sin-free life. The facts of Jesus Christ's life, crucifixion, resurrection, and subsequent ascension, i.e. the gospel of Jesus Christ, are the absolute truth. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation, i.e. everlasting life. In God Almighty's immediate presence, with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God Almighty's holy angels, and all the rest of the children of God Almighty, for eternity, forever, i.e. God Almighty's amazing saving grace, through God Almighty's free gift of salvation, which comes only through Jesus Christ. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I, Jesus Christ, am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, God Almighty, except through me, Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, verses 15 through 17. He, Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, Jesus Christ, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him, Jesus Christ, and for him. And he, Jesus Christ, did before all things. And in him, Jesus Christ, all things consist, all things exist. Acts 4, verse 12. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, nor is there salvation, i.e. everlasting life, in any other. For there is no other name except and only Jesus Christ under heaven, given among men, i.e. mankind, by which we, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, must be saved from the lake of fire to second death, everlasting condemnation. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 6a. For I deliver to you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, first of all, that which I also received through the Holy Spirit, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, the Holy Bible, and specifically the Gospel of Jesus Christ, and that He, Jesus, was buried, and that He, Jesus, rose alive again the third day according to the Scriptures, the Holy Bible, and specifically the Gospel of Jesus Christ, and that He, Jesus, was seen alive by Cephas, also known as Peter, then Jesus was seen alive by the twelve Jesus' disciples. After that, he, Jesus, was seen alive by over five hundred brethren, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, at once, i.e. Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and subsequent ascension, the gospel of Jesus Christ. If your church tells you you must perform works to earn your way into God Almighty's immediate presence, run. Ephesians 2, verses 8-10. through 10. For by grace, God Almighty's amazing saving grace, you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, have been saved from the lake of fire to second death, everlasting condemnation, through faith, faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that not of yourselves. It, salvation, is a gift of God, God Almighty's free gift of salvation, not of mankind's works, lest anyone should boast. For we, fellow believers, are His, God Almighty's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, God Almighty's good works performed through us which God, God Almighty, prepared beforehand that we, fellow believers, should walk in them. If your church does not believe these facts about the Holy Bible, run. The Holy Bible, the Old Testament 39 books, the New Testament 27 books, for a total of 66 books, is the absolute truth and is the only text of God Almighty's word in written form, period, i.e. there are no additional books whatsoever. Therefore, we must teach the entire Holy Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, including Holy Bible prophecy, which makes up at least one-third of the Holy Bible. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. All Scripture, the Holy Bible, and specifically the Gospel of Jesus Christ, is given by inspiration of God, God Almighty, breathed and God Almighty inspired, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. God Almighty's good works performed through us. Galatians 1, verse 9. As we, fellow believers, have said before, so now I say again, if anyone, false teachers, false believers, and unbelievers, preaches any other gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ to you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, then what you have received through the Holy Spirit, let him, false teachers, false believers, and unbelievers, be accursed in the lake of fire to second death, everlasting condemnation. If your church tells you a true believer can lose his or her salvation, run. John 10, verses 27 and 28. Jesus answered them, My sheep, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I, Jesus Christ, give them eternal life. 
i.e. everlasting life, through God Almighty's immediate presence, with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God Almighty's holy angels, and all the rest of the children of God Almighty, for eternity, forever, and they shall never perish in the lake of fire, the second death, everlasting condemnation. Neither shall anyone, not even Satan, snatch them out of my, Jesus Christ, hand. Romans 8, verses 16 and 17. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself, bears witness with our spirit, believer spirits, that we, fellow believers, are children of God, God Almighty, and of children and heirs, heirs of God, God Almighty, and joint heirs with Christ of the kingdom of God Almighty, if indeed we suffer with him, that we, fellow believers, may also be glorified together in our spiritual bodies at the being caught up together. Romans 8, verses 29 and 30. For whom, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, he, God Almighty, foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in the spiritual body to the image of his Son, Jesus Christ, that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn in the spiritual body among many brethren, fellow believers, children of God Almighty. Moreover, whom he, God Almighty, predestined, these fellow believers he also called to be children of God Almighty, whom he, God Almighty, called, these fellow believers he also justified, and whom he, God Almighty, justified, these fellow believers he also glorified in our spiritual bodies at the being caught up together. Second Corinthians 5, verses 6 through 8. So we, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the natural body, we are absent from the Lord Jesus Christ. For we walk by faith, faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, not by human sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather, to be absent from the natural body and to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, verses 13 and 14. In him, Jesus Christ, you fellow believers, children of God Almighty, also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the Holy Bible, and specifically the gospel of Jesus Christ, in whom Jesus Christ also, having believed, you fellow believers, were sealed forever with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, the kingdom of God Almighty, until the redemption of the purchased possession, fellow believers have the being caught up together to the praise of his, Jesus Christ's glory. If your church tells you there is no such thing as a being caught up together, also known as harpazo or the rapture, run. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 49 and 51 to 53. And as we, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, are born in the image of the man of dust, the natural body, we, fellow believers, shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, Jesus Christ, the spiritual body, at the being caught up together. Behold, I tell you, fellow believers, a mystery, something once known but now forgotten. We, pre-tribulation believers, shall not all sleep, die a physical death of the natural body. But we, pre-tribulation believers, shall all be changed, an instantaneous supernatural change in our spiritual bodies, in a moment, in a twink of an eye, in a millisecond of time, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet of God Almighty will sound in the dead, pre-tribulation dead believers will be raised alive, incorruptible in their spiritual bodies. And we, pre-tribulation living believers, shall be changed, an instantaneous supernatural change into our spiritual bodies. For this corruptible, the natural body, must put on incorruption, the spiritual body, and this mortal, the natural body, must put on immortality, the spiritual body. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord Jesus Christ himself would ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, God Almighty, and the dead in Christ, pre-tribulation dead believers, will rise alive in their spiritual bodies first. Then we, pre-tribulation living believers, who are alive and remain on earth for the moment, shall be instantaneously supernaturally changed into our spiritual bodies, and then caught up together with them, the dead in Christ, in the clouds far above the earth, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, and be taken into heaven by Jesus Christ himself. And thus we, risen pre-tribulation dead believers and pre-tribulation living believers, shall always be for eternity forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, if your church tells you that we, the body of Christ, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, must endure the seven-year tribulation, run. Luke 21, verse 36. Then he, Jesus, said to them, Watch therefore and pray always that you, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, may be counted worthy to escape at the being caught up together all these things, the seven-year tribulation that will come to pass, and to stand in heaven before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, during the seven-year tribulation. Revelation 3, verse 10. These things says he, Jesus Christ, who is holy, he who is true, because you, pre-tribulation living believers, have kept my command to persevere, I, Jesus Christ also, will keep you at the being caught up together from the hour of trial, the seven-year tribulation, which will come upon the whole world, Satan's world, to test those false teachers, false believers, and unbelievers who dwell on the earth during the seven-year tribulation. First Thessalonians 5, verses 9 and 10. For God, God Almighty, did not appoint us, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, to wrath, God Almighty's wrath, during the seven-year tribulation. 
But God Almighty did appoint us to obtain salvation, everlasting life through our Lord Jesus Christ at the being caught up together who died for us, i.e. Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and subsequent ascension, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That whether we wake, pre-tribulation living believers, or we sleep, pre-tribulation dead believers, we, pre-tribulation believers, should live together with him, Jesus Christ, at the being caught up together for eternity, forever. Fellow believers, keep this in mind. Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, do not wrestle spiritually battle against flesh and blood, i.e. mankind, but we spiritually battle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, i.e. we spiritually battle against Satan, the fallen angels, and demons. 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 9. Therefore, humble yourselves, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, under the mighty hand of God, that he, God Almighty, may exalt you in due time at the being caught up together, casting all your care upon him, for he, God Almighty, cares for you. Be sober, spiritually alert, be vigilant, be watchful, because your adversary, the adversary, the devil, Satan, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, Satan, steadfast, firm in the faith, faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that the same suffering, spiritual attacks, are experienced by your brotherhood, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, in the world, Satan's world. Ephesians 6, verses 10, 10 and 11, and 13 through 18. Finally, my brethren, fellow believers, children of God Almighty, be strong in the Lord God Almighty, and be strong in the power of His, God Almighty's might. Put on the whole armor of God, God Almighty, that you, fellow believers, may be able to stand firm in the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ against the wiles and deceptions of the devil, Satan. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, God Almighty, that you, fellow believers, may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, firm in the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, the Holy Bible, and specifically the gospel of Jesus Christ, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, with which you, fellow believers, will be able to quench, extinguish all the fiery dark spiritual attacks of the wicked one, Satan, and take the helmet of salvation, the hope of everlasting life, and the sword of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is the Word of God, the Holy Bible, and specifically the Gospel of Jesus Christ, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, being watchful, spiritually alert to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, fellow believers, children of God Almighty. Fellow believers, until the being caught up together occurs, remember, Jesus Christ abides within us through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Jesus Christ walks with us, the Holy Spirit teaches us, and most importantly, God Almighty watches over us, always. Wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do, be it in the natural physical world or in cyber world, may our Lord Jesus Christ find you going about the Father's business, which is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ as a good and faithful servant. Amen.